Uh, and the next talk uh, is given by Linda Geister on multi-satellite SLR solutions. So hello everybody. Um, today I would like to present you the multi-satellite SLR solutions including LARES and recently also LARES 2. Thank you. Um, so first I will start with um, a short introduction of the properties of the satellites that we used and also the data set. Then I will show you first um, a Lachios and a LARES combination where we also tried to co-estimate Earth gravity field coefficients. And afterwards I show you the first um, results where we tried to include LARES 2. So first of all, um, we see here the four satellites, LACHOS-1, 2, LARES, and LARES-2. And La um, LACHOS-1 and 2, and also LARES-2, have more or less the same orbital altitude, around 5,500 to 5,900 kilometers. Um, here you can see that LARES-2 was, la LARES was launched recently um, in July 13 this year. And what we also can see that only LARES have a lower altitude around 1,450 kilometers and therefore we have also um, to adapt the orbit parametrization for LARES. So the data set that we used here we can see um, for LACHOS and the LARES combination we used five years from 2015 to um, 2020. And the normal points that we used per weekly solution um, was around 500 to 2,000 um, normal points um, per each um, satellite. Here we also can see which station provided the most um, number of normal points, or here I have to say the normal points that we really used for our analysis. And here we can see, or not really, but um, this is Yara Gadi, um, Simmerwald, Hurstman Zoo, and Greenbelt. Um, then for the inclusion of LARES 2, um, we started mid of July and only up to September 2022. And here you can see that um, LARES, maybe here, that LARES 2 um, after or at the end of August, we already have um, normal points on the same level as for example for LARES 2. So it is tracked very often. And here we also see the um, SLR data for LARES 2 per station. So here we have 16 stations. And um, the first one is uh, Matera, Yaragadi, um, and so on. And these are the stations which are provided the most data or the data that we really used. Um, now we are focused on the LACHOS and LARES combination. Here we see the parametrization. So we set up six oscillating orbital elements um, for LACHOS and for LARES. We also set up constant and once per revolution accelerations in a long track and cross track. And as I said, we also um, as set up pseudostochastic pulses in a long track, but only for LARES because of the lower altitude that we can um, absorb some mismodeling in the air drag or in the solar radiation pressure. Um, we also estimate the geodetic parameters, the interesting ones, so the earth rotation parameters, geocenter coordinates, also station coordinates where we use a no net rotation and no net translation, a minimal constraint, and range biases where we set up range biases for LARES for all the station and for LARES only for a selected um, number of stations. And now, as I said, we also try to co-estimate gravity field coefficients up to degree and order four. And um, we well know that there are some correlations between the ones per revolution accelerations and the gravity field um, coefficients. And this I will show you here, um, where we see the correlation matrices. 
So on the left side, you can see the correlation between the ones per revolution acceleration in cross-track and C to zero for all, th all three satellites. And so if you want to estimate a reliable C to zero, we should not set up the ones per revolution acceleration in cross-track. And on the right side, we can see the correlation between the ones per revolution acceleration in a long track and C30. But here, we also see it for all three satellites, but we do not set up this um, periodic term only for, the, um, for LARES, because LARES is more sensitive to C30, and we need um, the, the ones per revolution acceleration in the long track for LACHOS to stabilize the solution. So we end up with the following um, parametrization, where we only estimate um, a constant in once per revolution acceleration in a long track for the larger satellite, and for LARES only the constant one in a long track. On the right side, now if we um, start to combine these two satellite groups, um, we can see that if we fix the weight of LACHOS to one, and we get from the variance component estimation a value of the weighting for LARES. And in the mean over the time period from 2015 to 2020, it's around 0 0.23. Now the first result, so the Earth rotation parameters. And here we see three solutions, the LACHOS only. LACHOS and LARES, where we do not estimate gravity field coefficients and set up all the once per revolution accelerations. And um, the last um, solution where we also estimate the gravity field coefficients. And what we can see is that the weighted RMS of the polar motion increases by 15 to 20 percent compared to the LACHOS-LARES combination, where we do not set up the gravity field coefficients. But what is remarkable is that UT1 minus UTC, that we can clearly reduce there the weighted RMS. And this is also shown here with the time series. Um, and this would be mainly due to the error that arises in, in LOD or in UT1 minus UTC um, caused by the nodal precession due to the offset in C20 and also um, with the correlation between the once per revolution accelerations and the C20. Um, on the right side, we see the station coordinates. Here, the RMS of the helmet transformation with respect to the SLRF 2014. And we can see that for the combination with LARES, that almost um, northeast and up increases slightly. But this was to be expected because the SLRF 2014 is only based on LACHOS data only. Now the interesting um, part, so with the Earth gravity field coefficients, on the left we see C20. And we compared here, we see two solutions. Um, one where we set up the once per revolution acceleration in the long track for Lars, and one where we do not set up them and we compare it to the CSR reference series. And what we can see that both solutions are almost identical, um, but it shows a small offset compared to the CSR series. On the right side, we now see C30, so the estimated values. And here we can clearly see if we do um, set up the once per revolution acceleration, so this is the green curve, um, we can see that we don't can estimate a reliable C30. But if we do not set up um, this periodic term for LARES, we can see that we can est estimate a C30. But here also we see a stronger annual signal than the CSR reference series. But here I also would like to mention that if we include Stella and Starlet, especially Starlet, um, we can reduce the offset in C20 compared to the CSR um, series or reference series and also the annual signal. Now the second part of the presentation where we try to include LARES 2. And as I mentioned, we don't have that much data or the time span is not that large. So we have only seven weekly solutions that we tried um, to show here. 
Um, again, the parametrization here, because we do not estimate the gravity field coefficients, we also um, set up the once per revolution accelerations. Um, for the weighting, we again using the variance component estimation, and for LARS2, we also do not set up pseudostochastic pulses because it has almost um, an identical orbit altitude as the larger satellites. And what's maybe also important, the range biases are also estimated for all the stations because we don't know yet that much about LARS2. So um, the weighting for the satellite groups from the VCE, we can hear, we can see it here on the left side. Um, the, the weights are again um, with respect to LARS2, so this means LARS2 was again set to one. And corresponding, we said um, we have now the weights um, for LARS and LARS2. And here we can clearly see that LARS2 gets a mean weight of 4.42, so much, so it is weighted stronger than the larger satellites. Now, if we have a look on the Earth rotation parameters, where we now compare the solutions where we only use LARS and LARS, and LARS, LARS, and LARS2. We can see that we can reduce the weighted RMS about 9 to also 20 percent, and also the bias can be reduced if we include LARS2. The only value that is increased and may almost doubled is the weighted RMS of UT1 minus UTC, and you also can see it here at the um, at the plot. Um, you you can see that that they differ very much, and yet we don't know why this happened. Um, the station coordinates for the two solutions, I would say, are um, only different or more or less different in the horizontal plane, um, where the, in north it um, increases by 1.4 millimeters and in east it decreases by 0.5 millimeters. Um, here I only showed one um, part of the contribution analysis where we can see how much each satellite contributes to estimate one of these parameters. And here we can see the polar motion. Um, and what we also can see is that LARS2 um, contributes a lot um, sometimes more than LACHOS um, to, to estimate the polar motion. So it seems that LARS2 um, helps to improve our solution. And the last slide is about the observation residuals, um, where we see the RMS of the observation residuals. And it is clearly um, visible that LARS2 has on the mean um, uh, an observation residuals of 5.2 millimeters, and it's more than 40 or around 40 percent smaller than for the Lecher satellite. So I think we can confirm here um, that the high quality of LARS 2. So the summary will be that we have to be very careful if we try to co-estimate gravity field coefficients that we have to adapt our parametrization, orbit parametrization, especially for LARAS, but that it's more or less possible to um, estimate or co-estimate the gravity field coefficients with a LARAS and LARAS combination. And we successfully included LARAS2 in our um, SLR processing, and as I said, um, we can confirm the high quality of this data. The outlook would be that we still try to optimize the orbit parametrization for the low Earth um, orbiting satellites, also for LARAS, because um, you can see here that um, LARAS has still um, a very high RMS of the observation residuals. And this is maybe also due to, to mismodelings. Um, and at the end, we also try to have multi-satellite solutions where we really also include Stella, Starlet, Archisai, and so on. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Linda. Um, any questions from the audience? Uh, Graham?
Okay, meanwhile, we'll do a question from, uh, from online. So there's one from uh, Zuher. So Linda, did you investigate the origin and scale agreement between Lares and Lagios? Not yet, no. Okay, and the second one is, uh, your slides refer to Lagios only. Was this just terminology or did you really not include Lagios too? Uh, no, um, this is a combination of Lagios one and two, yeah. Okay, so Graham. I was interested in your discussion about solving for UT1 minus UTC. Normally, I think most of us would not accept that we can do that. It's not, we haven't got an external reference. So is it length of day or do you have to fix a so, UT1 value somewhere? So, yeah, it was like um, we took the, the a priori um, value from UT1 minus UTC from the reference series at um, zero hour. And then we here I showed... Um, the, the values UT1 minus UTC for the 12 hour um, epoch. So what we can see is half of the drift of um, given from the length of day. So it don't mean that we really estimate UT1 minus UTC because it's not possible with SLR, but you can see the effect um, of, the, of the rate that we estimated. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Linda. Thanks. And we